In this fictional scenario, we have a CSV file that the customer has given us with a list of camera MAC addresses and the GPS coordinates for those cameras. So let's go ahead and import the, the CSV file into a variable here. And let's see what it looks like. Okay. So we have a header called Mac and a column called coordinates. Now let's connect to our management server and see if um, see what the coordinates look like for our existing cameras. Okay, we're already connected. So I'm going to get all the hardware, and for every hardware device. I'll get the cameras associated with it, and then I'm going to select the camera name and the GIS point property. That's a string property representing the GPS settings for that camera. Okay, so right now the, uh, the GPS coordinates are empty, um, and so we get back a string value that just says point empty for all of our cameras. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a GPS coordinate in the management client by hand, and then we'll see what, the, what it looks like in PowerShell. Okay, so let's do this again. All right, so I put in the GPS coordinates negative 33 comma 51, so negative 33 latitude and 151 longitude. But you can see in PowerShell here that the value is stored as a string uh, with the longitude first and then the latitude second. And in our CSV file, it's the other way around. So it's stored the normal way people think about GPS coordinates the uh, latitude first and then the longitude. So we need to keep that in mind when we read the, the rows in and, and update the camera coordinates in PowerShell. We'll need to construct a proper um, point string that looks like this. All right, so we have all of our desired GPS coordinates in this rows variable. Um, let's go ahead and go through all the hardware devices. We need to find, uh, go through all the hardware devices and look at the MAC address and then find the row in the CSV file that matches that MAC address. So let's start with that. Get hardware will get all of the hardware devices from all the recording servers for you and put it in this variable here, dollar hardware. And now we need to get the MAC address for the hardware device in each iteration of this loop. So we'll do hardware and then pipe that to get hardware setting. And we specifically want to grab the MAC address property. So what I'm going to do is wrap this in parentheses and then I'm going to do dot MAC address. And let's just see what this looks like. I'm going to write out, yeah, I'll just write out the MAC address to the console and see what, let's see what it looks like here. OK, so I'm able to find the MAC addresses uh, and print them out to the console. Uh, this one looks a little funny. That's actually a interconnect driver. And so that's the GUID for the interconnected site. That's why it doesn't quite look like a MAC address. Um, all right, so now we know we can grab the MAC addresses. Let's now find the row associated with that MAC address. So we'll say row equals, and we'll do rows where object MAC equals MAC. And so this row variable should now be either it should be a, a P 
GPS custom object that has a Mac property and a coordinates property, or it'll be null. Um, so just to make sure it's still working, let's write row out here and we should get, um, basically we should get the contents of that CSV file and we won't get anything, um, any entry with this MAC address because that's not in the CSV file. So let's just hit F5 and see what that looks like. All right, so far so good. So now we need to say uh, if null is not equal to row, then we'll do some work. So what this is doing is saying if we couldn't find this MAC address, so this MAC address is associated with a hardware device in milestone, but that device is not represented in the CSV file, um, then we're just going to go and go to the next hardware device. We're going to skip it. But if it matches, uh, if it matches something that's in that CSV file, we'll proceed. Okay, so um, if null is not equal to row, then we know row contains a MAC property and a coordinates property. So at this point, uh, we have the coordinates we need in the row.coordinates property. Um, so we need to get all the cameras associated with the current hardware device, and then we'll update those coordinates in PowerShell. So let's do um, for each camera in hardware get camera. So what we're doing here is we're passing the current hardware device um, in this, this iteration uh, to the get hardware or get camera commandlet. And that is going to give us one or more camera devices back um, that are associated with that hardware. And it'll put it in this camera variable for us. And in that camera variable, we have a camera.gis point property. That's a string property. And we need to, we need to set that. Um, so let's get our latitude and longitude from this coordinates column into a couple of variables. So we'll do, uh, we can see that the uh, latitude is coming first and then our longitude. So we'll do lat comma long equals and we'll do row dot coordinates and we're going to split that on the comma. So it's going to give us back to an array with two items. Um, and then it's going to store the first one in latitude, the second one in longitude. And that's important because we need to, we need to use those numbers to create a, a string that milestone is going to recognize when we're setting the, uh, the coordinates. Um, so now we have our latitude and longitude. We should be able to go to the camera dot GIS point property, and we're going to set it to point. And we'll do our longitude first, that X value, and then our latitude. And then we need to call the save method. And at this point, if I run the script, it should update all of our cameras coordinates in the management client. Um, so let me show you the management client before we move. And you can see the, the one camera there has its coordinates set, but the rest are currently unset. So let's go back to PowerShell and hit F5. And we're done. Let's see if that worked. So we'll get hardware, get camera, and again we'll do select name and GIS point. Okay, so that looks like it has set everything except for that interconnect device that I mentioned earlier. So that's exactly what we wanted. Let's take a look at management client. We'll refresh. And it looks like everything is set. You can see right down here, the coordinates appear to be updated. 
based on the MAC address. Let's see what that looks like in the smart client now. Let me see if, um, if it'll let me show you the smart client. There we go. I'm going to hit F5 in smart client to reload the configuration. And there we go. We've got all of our cameras distributed. Uh, those coordinates are um, some of the, the top cities by population in, in the United States. And uh, there we go.